once again with a new day of sunless skies. So, once again, I've been doing some errands in the background. I'll show you what all that has gotten me in a little in a little bit. But right now, we are here at Whirlbury Juxtamar, the seaside resort town with a little bit more going on under the surface than would meet the eye at first glance. And we're here because we are following the Incognito Princess's quest line. She came here because she doesn't fucking know what sadness is, and she wanted some uh, morose poets to explain it to her. So we found them. Now we are going to talk to them. Alcoholics and melancholics. Okay, so there's a series of sorrily clad people with scarves and aggressive rhyme schemes gathering around a public house. Um, okay, I squeeze in the back. There are rows of serious young folk before me. Poets take the stage to chart their woe at the working class's plight. Or at least that's what I presume from their gestures. They're inaudible over the chattering of the chattering classes. The princess is pressed against the back wall. She ignores the rats who assemble to paw worshipfully at her feet. <laughs> I'd rather be closer, she states. Um... I will impersonate the gentlefolk of the press. Poets are addicted, are addicts for coverage. Convince them that I, where critics will get us a better position. Never mind, I will fail to do so. I locate the best dressed poet and start to explain who I write for, only to receive a laugh and reply. Oh man, that magazine reviewed them abdomina, abominably in the last issue. I'm not getting another chance. Eventually, the princess's patience give way and she whistles. <laughs> Everyone in front of her falls to the ground, and she walks over their bodies. Uh, she's, um, kind of terrifying. We follow her to the front. You look up at a poet staring into the middle distance, describing the misery of the hour looms. Slowly, he becomes aware of the incognito princess, stutters, and changes tack, hailing her highness in celestial verse. <laughs> Soon, another poet steps on the stage, adding her own thoughts on how extraordinarily well the princess compares to the first day of spring. Then a third, then a fourth... The princess takes a break from the attention of the poets and turns to me. I'll meet you back in the locomotive, she says. <laughs> Apparently that was what she wanted. Um now I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for just one more. Let's see what she's up to. I push back into the public house to see every poet in the room hailing her. Um not so blue now, my sad rhymers, she says, waving encouragingly at the poets. You can find the words. If not English, perhaps words more celestial. After a brief moment, they find a language whose shapes sound ill-fitted for a human palate. They rush on joyously. One poet's tongue ignites, then another, then a third. Soon, every poet has a mouthful of flame. And still they don't stop. In the middle of the conflagration stands the princess beaming. This seems to be contagious. Best to run. I lost a heart. No, my hearts. I got a searing enigma, though, which are hard to come by. Um, okay. I'm going to just finish out these, uh, uh, actions here that are going to reduce my terror. Let's leave just with swift. Actually, maybe I should reduce my terror some more while I'm here. Because uh, this princess is terrifying. Oops. Mm, okay. Yeah, pretty much every option you select here reduces your terror a little bit. What does this give me? Uh, a vision of heaven and some tea. Nice. Oh, but it gives me terror. Darn. It's alright. Okay, okay, okay. Let's buy some rubbery lumps. Mmm, delicious. And I can do one more thing. Buy some more rubbery lumps. Delicious. Alright, see ya. Is there anything else I can do here? I don't think so. Oh, I need to drop off some stuff. And you sell carefully packed crates of munitions, which I will buy because I need them for somewhere else. I think Lustrum. Okay, let's talk to our princess. See uh, what she learned from that. What happened to the poetry reading? 
A stoker whispered that the inn burned down, killing all the poets. Is this true? No, it's not true, Captain. Um, oh, so she had an analytical suitor. Now, crouching beside him, is a gaunt man with wild eyes. My poetical suitor arrived, she says. You really should not listen to gossip. It's no time for gossip. My journey now takes a more serious bent. She then explains her next destinations. Firstly, she has to find the crossroads a crossroads in Eleutheria. She's of the opinion they're often south of the transit relay when one arrives. You'll require an unlicensed chart there. Okay. Secondly, a trip to see the devils in Carillon on the matter of rings. She might need a handful of bee souls for that. Hmm. Huh. This girl's weirding me out. Alright, I forgot what I have to do with the rest of these dudes. Oh. Fortunate navigator, and I can now persuade him to talk. Okay. What's, uh, what's going on, dude? A needed confidant. He joins me in his cabin. Finally, the words tumble out. I thought I was alright. I just got on with my work, and I was doing well. Alright, he's the one with the dead friend. He reaches beneath his bunk to pull out the book the matriarch gave him. Altan read this all the time. He'd act it out, do the voices. It's the epic of King Geezer. Gizar, Gizar. Alton knew the true me. He shared his clothes, helped me bind my chest the first time. Oh, he's trans. Okay. Got me into my first fist fight. The navigator sets up proudly. He was my best friend. When we were children, I made a promise to him. Okay, what's your promise? Uh, what did you promise? When we were grown up, we would go exploring together. We'd go on great quests, do mighty things. We'd be heroes. People would write stories about us. I'm exploring the skies, and he didn't even get to leave home. I'm not going to break my promise. I will give him adventures worthy of King Geezer. Please, Captain, I want to go to Eagle's Empyrean. I'm breaking him out of his tomb. But I'll need your help. You'll need a visa to come with me. The London Embassy there will give you one. He frowns. If you've not been to Eleutheria, the relay is near Hybris in the Reach. Okay. That's two things pulling us towards Eleutheria now, which we haven't been to yet, so and where does this guy want to go? Oh, I need Chorister Nectar for this. Okay. Which I believe I have in my bank. I can go do that right now, actually. Alright, we made it to London. Got some uh, Chorister Nectar out of the bank, and now we can restore the clay conductor's voice. I've overheard him attempting to sing, but he gave up quickly. His voice was gravelly and out of practice. Some nectar might help lubricate the vocal cords. A friend in need. The clay conductor fetches a spoon and several lumps of sugar. He mashes the lumps into the honey, then gargles the concoction. When he's done, you wrangle a little of his past from him. He was in the clay choirs. His dead companion was a very talented clay chorister. I have hopes of finding someone with as good a voice again. One cannot be a chorus alone. I've heard tell of a clay man in the most serene mausoleum. Hmm. Yes, I will take you to the serene mausoleum. Do I have to talk to him again, or is that like... Yeah, okay, that's it. Okay, obviously we're going to the Serene Mausoleum Burrow. First, we're gonna sell some stuff. We're gonna buy some stuff. Oh yeah, so, look at this cool ass shit. We got the Gonorill, this new engine. So, like I said before, same movement speed and fuel consumption as the other engine we had, but you notice this full steam speed specification there. Hmm, full steam speed? What does that mean? What could that be? I don't know. Well, it's pretty fucking cool. Let me show you um, on the way to... What's it called? Where am I going? Orlbury, and then uh, the mausoleum. So I need to be in a kind of wide open area to do it. So let's like get around this bend here, this switchback. I can try it out. All right, that should be good enough. Watch this. Charge it up. Kaboom! Now I'm zooming. Look, there are lines going past me, but so you can tell I'm zooming. Actually, it only does that at the start. Look at this shit. 
So it like uses a little bit of fuel to activate and I think it uses more while you're using it, but you go so fast. There's some other limitations too. You can't like react with things. You can't shift, uh, you can't like juke left and right. And apparently you take more damage if you run into things, but I'm sure that'll never happen, right? Like that's impossible for me to ever run into anything. So I don't even need to worry about that, honestly. Touch of the skies. Skyfarers exposed to the haunting light of the stars are prone to sudden obsessions and erratic behavior. All right, so I could combine, confine, with their, 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 confine them to their quarters, send them back to work, or give them some brandy. Um, let's send them back to work. Nope, that didn't work. What the fuck? You harry them back to work with a carefully stewed mixture of encouragement and chastisement, but their obsessions only continue to consume them. They make mistakes, some of which are dangerous, and their persistent oddness unsettles the crew. They fucked up my ship, dude. Oh my gosh. Holy guacamole, Batman. It's fine. Oh, hey. Squirt Luke, you're not usually see you in this part of the skies. Oops. So I've kind of decided that I don't like the uh, this weapon. Ow. Um, it basically does the same thing as my other weapon, just with like lower packets of damage. And by packets of damage, I mean like yeah, it's slightly easier to hit one thing, unless this thing's a juke god, but you you need to God, stop juking me. You need to hit, like, stop juking me. It's juking me, bro! But basically, like, you need to hit four in succession to equal uh, how many shots the, like, quote-unquote regular shot would do. And I'd rather take, like, fewer chances and just hit. Oh, no. Get away from me. I hate these things. How many hits do you need? There we go. Alright, we could tear off a trophy. We could communicate with it. You could reinforce the hull. I'm going to try tearing off a trophy. Nope. Didn't work. I did get an uncanny specimen, though. Alright. Engage. Wow. Jeez Louise, look at my terror now. Yeah, and your turning radius is also vastly increased. But it's fine. It's still fun. Of note is the fact that you also can't... What? What was that? I've got a horn? Oh! <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it. again to reduce our terror because it just like shot up for some reason. Don't get right. Ruminate on the nature of donkeys. What's up with donkeys? I think I made the same joke last time. Charming team. 
donkey ride again. I love donkeys. Are we doing it one more time? We're gonna ride the donkeys again! Dude, I mean... If a resort town offered donkey rides, I would never leave. Like, come on now. Alright, that's pretty good. Why did I come here in the first place? Oh, I came here to drop off some glass. Do you have anything for me to buy? No. Rude. Alright, now we're off to, uh, what's it called? To Mausoleum. Might as well, uh, visit, like, go through some of these areas that we haven't gone through before while we're here. Might as well do it at fucking warp speed, because again, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, it uses a big chunk of fuel when you turn it on, but it's fine. So there are like two more things that I want to do here in the London sector before I um, go to Eleutheria. One is what I'm about to do, talk to this friend of the clay man. Rabbits run. I love that book. Um, and the other is uh, something. Is that? Break! Oh, I think I could have made it. And the other is still find the Royal Academy. I kind of got sidetracked from doing that last time. Alright, are there any creepy crawlies out here that I haven't seen before? There's a... something here. There's a... horror? What horror is this? Is it horrible? What the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? Skyhenge? You tether your engine to a circle of men here, which are like giant blocks, giant stones, standing on a wide stone ledge. The tallest towers over you, the height of three men. You can brush the top of the smallest with your fingers. The rocks are rough, weathered. Far beneath the plain, other vast stone plates turn remorselessly. Here, the megalithic monument is still, but the place feels like kilter. You stumble as if dizzy. I could whisper a sky story to the tallest stone. Nah. Ooh, I've got some hours. I could step inside the ring of stones. Stoker's tales say if you bring an offering of hours to the circle, you'll receive gifts in return. Let's try it. Sudden snowflakes snag on your eyelashes. The snow's not falling, frozen in place. You cut a tunnel through. Behind you is a moor, blanketed in white. There are no men here in sight. Before you is a slab of stone, lit by a final slant of winter sunlight. Around this lab is a gathering of tall beings. Their heads and necks are as long and sinuous as swans, rising from the narrow collars of their white, feathered robes. Hmm. Gift a barrel of hours to the beings that live between seconds. This is what the stories say they desire, after all. I'm getting, um... Like, Terry Pratchett vibes? What's that book? Lords and Ladies. Where, like in his mythology elves are these like interdimensional beings who want to gain access to our world and do it through these kind of special places including places with standing stones so what are these motherfuckers going on about i think it's very connected with kind of like english old english folklore well, this is what the stories say they desire uh, the beings consider you, but say nothing. They wait. Your crew lifts the barrel of hours onto the stone slab. A stoker pries the lid off. As the geo tumbles out, there's a flurry of motion. The translucent beings cluster around the barrel, gathering up the geodes with boneless limbs. Ugh. They pass them out, cradling each one gently. One being spills a shimmer of bright gemstones, their color riotous in this white place, into your arms. The others begin to croon softly to the hours. 
Or a pretty good deal. I got a vision of the heavens and a cast of gems cask of gemstones. Nice dude. Alright, uh see ya. I'm getting out of here. Uh see ya. I'm leaving. Looks cool as shit. Pretty pretty cool. Wait, are there two things here? There are two things here. What's the other thing? What is that? A weft of unravel unraveling time. You've strayed into a place where the weave of time has frayed. The sky groans. The borders that separate past and future crumble, and your engine is dragged in. Oh, that's not good. So I could allow myself to be pulled in, or I could commend my crew to escape the weft. I don't have great chances at escaping. I don't know what I'm risking. Oh, uh, um, uh, what, what happens if you get pulled in? It's the 25th of September. I'm going to keep a note on the date. The boiler rumbles. The chimneys spume. You urge your locomotive forward into the churn of time. The present quivers, falters, and is torn away. Okay, now I'm within the weft. Past and future not, like dueling pythons. Nothing is constant. Another age washes over your locomotive, and everything changes. Um... When you leave the weft, some of your present circumstances will follow you out. Be careful when you... What does that mean? <laughs> Be careful when you depart. Uh, escape a time when all was good is new. If you escape, you will gain hull and lose terror, experience, and sky stories. Now, that sounds terrible. So I'm going to remain in the weft. Perhaps if you tolerate this current present a while longer, or hide from it, or pray, it will pass. Perhaps another time will replace it. Perhaps you'll like that time better. Perhaps I will. So I gained some terror. Time is unraveling. All right, now I'll give it a, I've got a, a different choice. The longer you're in the weft, the easier it is to leave, but the more serious the effects may be. Okay, so escape from a grim ending. Uh, ooh, this is a, okay. A cold future. Your locomotive is silent. Its engine is still. Its coal store is empty. As you make your way to the bridge, you step over slumped corpses, pale in fine coats of frost. On the navigator's table is a brittle map, charting a desperate course somewhere no one has any business. There's a corpse in the captain's chair, too. You do not look. If you escape, you'll gain an unlicensed chart and tales of terror while losing fuel and crew. I think fuel, fuel and crew are expendable. And I've got a 98% chance to succeed. Let's do it. I lost two crew. That's totally worth it, man. That is totally worth it. It's not the date that it was, but it is, though. It doesn't. It didn't actually change. Oh, that looks cool as hell. Wait, it is the date that it was, though. You fucking liar ass game. Oh, hey, dude. Hey, scribe spinster, come here. Eat my butt. Bro, where are you going? I wanna. Oh, you're stuck. Are you stuck? Oh, my. I can't even. Does that even. Is that even taking damage? I don't... That guy's a little stuck in there. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. Okay. There's a bit of a... What is this? It's a weird texture. Oh, it's in the background. That's why. Okay, we're making our way to the mausoleum, but I haven't been over in this corner of the sky yet. Let's see what's over here. section of the wastes here. So it looks like... Does this open up? Is this a way off the map? Nope, not quite. Maybe. Stuff? I 
like it. Got town hall, very nice. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly interesting over here. I'm a little surprised. above us. We're going right past it. Sick, dude. Let's see if we can skirt it. Skirt, skirt. We are skirting it. it seems. A little bit. What is that? That's a thing. Homestead. Oh, never mind. It's a vacant building and I can't explore it because I still don't have a say. <laughs> I just like the things that I've got in this slot so much. I could... Because, yeah, I've got a cannery station, which is only situationally useful, but it also gives me... Um, that. It also gives me... Um, it was either crew or cargo slots. I think it's cargo slots. Must have been the wind. And then in the other slot, I've got something that gives me plus 11 hold. Yeah, I'm not giving that up. That's too good. So, we cannot essay. Very sad. Maybe. Okay, so I want to make it to Eletheria. There's going to be another like hub city there, and it's going to have more... Uh, what's it called? It's gonna have more things to buy. Um, search for a clay man here. We made it to the serene mausoleum. The most serene mausoleum is full of mourners, tourists, and aristocrats seeking to reconcile themselves with death one way or another. The clay men are conspicuous in their absence. The clay conductor lumbers gloomily among the mourners, searching fruitlessly for someone who resembles himself. Eventually, the cheery registrar appears. I'm sorry, she tells you. Your friend is making people miserable. You explain your situation, and she relents. After a brief consideration of those interred in the mausoleum, she suggests that you seek an audience with the engraved mourner, a man of polished marble. He is one of the deathless. I'll need to gain favor of the deathless. Okay, I've done that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, oh, let's contemplate the dead sun. Nice. Uh, okay, approach the deathless. The most serene mausoleum houses more than just the prince consort. Under its soaring spires, the empress keeps her most favored courtiers. These lucky few are provided with every luxury they might wish, and a generous stipend of hours. The only condition of this bounty is that they are dead. A legality only. They cannot possess property nor hold political office as a result. They are the deathless. Occasionally, they design to, they deign to appear to visitors. Um, consult the engraved mourner. The engraved mourner consents to a meeting in his many pillared chambers. You sit on couches of blue stone and drink wine in ivory cups. The conductor hunches, his form far heavier than the furniture can support, while the mourner reclines elegantly upon his divan. After polite introductions, the conductor demands, Why do you look different? The mourner smiles. I was built for a purpose. To guide, to shepherd, to travel. It was deemed I should be pleasing to the eye and ear. Now, you wanted to hear me sing? His singing is somber and cold and sad. The clay conductor shakes his head. No good. Too much like the sky. You make your excuses. Alright, so that guy wasn't right. Um... Ooh, I need to visit the macabre counselor to tell her about her daughters. Well, do you have my daughter? Sure. The macabre counselor is as close to overjoyed as you've ever seen her, which is to say her mouth twitches, sadly. <laughs> the presumptuous heiress's response is much more passionate. She drops the hood with dramatic flair. You let a bloody monster steal my face! It's just a bit of skin, dear, the macabre counselor says soothingly. Perhaps it will grow back. If not, you should be used to masks by now. Jeez. 
Before the presumptuous heiress can continue her, her, her tirade, the macabre counselor draws you aside. Most satisfactory. You will have everything I promised it, promised, and more. Now, if you'll excuse me, my daughter and I have important matters to discuss. Got a crimson promise. I haven't even heard of those. And I got three casts of, casks of gemstones. Nice, dude. Okay. Um... And I can talk to her again if I want to. Is this uh, helpful? Oh, I've I got a favor. Now, does that can I use that favor for something? I don't think so. Well, I can inter a member of my crew. I've got money, and it reduces terror. How much terror does it reduce? I've got 33, and now I've got 23. That's pretty good. Well, actually, no, it's not. Magdalene's is better. Um, okay, so that place was no good. Hey, uh, Clay Conductor, where should we go next? Why were you so rude? The meeting with the engraved mourner clearly did not go well. He's defective. Plain to hear. No wonder he lives surrounded by humans. If they only knew true Clay music... He directs your attention to a crumpled brochure. It's for Magdalene's house of small comfort in the Reach. Any company the weary Skyfarer needs, we shall provide. Anyone you can think of, those of rubbery, rubbery persuasion, to the company of the dead, even Clay Company. The conductor taps the page. We shall see. Can we? Sure, dude. All right, sick. Sick, sick, sick. Um, but first, to find the, what's it called? The Royal Society Academy thing. And what's the best way to get there? We haven't gone through here yet. I don't even know if we can go through there. Let's find out, shall we? I've almost got another level, which is sick and nasty. So yeah, like I was saying before, I don't really like my primary weapon. It's just too hard to reliably hit stuff. Maybe I should just, I think, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is, well, obviously I want a different weapon, but now, well, since I've got it, um, I'm just going to save her for when I'm really up close. And use the other one for any other time. Well, actually, no, I don't. It might go the whole way through. Can I send out my bat while I'm zooming? Yeah, I can. Cool. Good to know. What did you find, bat? That's spread right ahead of me. How convenient! What is it? It's something I can't use. Awesome. But it's fine. All right, where are we going now? We're going over here. And I think, like I said, I think the Royal Society is the last port we haven't been to in this sector. Everywhere else is kind of accounted for. It, there's a little bit of a section down here in the southeast, but I don't think it's big enough to hold uh, a city. Also, I haven't heard anyone else talk about any other cities. Don't run into me, dude. This is a straight shot so far. Oh, he says right before. <laughs> Almost 
turning into something. Nice dude. Oh, nice. We found it. Okay. Now, how do we get around these rocks to get in? Jeez, seriously, how do we get around all this stuff? Guess we'll look this way. can't interact with. I know, you don't have to rub my face in it. Maybe I should conserve my fuel a little bit. I might be in trouble if the Royal Society doesn't sell it. Jeez, dude. This is hard to get to. You're not where you thought you were. Oh, come on, man. This will cost fuel and time. What is this? I'm gonna push forward into stranger skies. A lonely house emerges from the mists. Networks of dead ivy still cleave to the walls. The windows and doors are open and dark. No smoke rises from the chimney. Wordlessly, your crew tethered the engine. Ignoring your orders, some of them gather their belongings and prepare to disembark. This is our stop, one of them says. Let them go, I guess. Oh my fucking god! Nine crew? Okay. Luckily, that's just my engine that I lose, but holy fuck. Okay, I got one guy back. Oh! Oh! Get this gun does have nice pushback, I'll give it that. Dude, what? I can't see. Am I shooting? Holy moly. Alright, so, uh. Guess put get new crew on the list. Oh, yeah, look how much slower I'm going now, too. Well, I guess I should have spent the fuel, huh? <laughs> Holy moly. And I'm, like, about as far away from London as I could be right now, too, of course. Yeah, it won't even let me speed up. Damn, dude. What is this? It's like tucked away here. here. Very cool little place. Very idyllic. Maybe that's why it's kind of like hidden away in this little grove. Cool. Alright, the Royal something. Royal Society. Pretty mansions of stone and glass rise above, the, rise above the verdant gardens, while below, machines whir and groan. A persistent sound of hammering pounds through the air. Uh, the Celestial Exhibition? Ooh. To the delight of mostly himself, the mellifluous president is planning an exhibition in the Royal Society. Its theme will be the science of the skies. He's happy to pay visiting captains for items of interest they might come across. Okay. I see. So this is another place where you can... Uh, what's it called? 
change your kind of your intangibles into cash, but no, uncanny specimens are kind of hard to come by. All right, the Royal Society. Introduce yourself at Airy House. Okay, the words nullius in verba. I don't know what that means. Nullius sounds like, like nothing. Does that mean like nothing in words or something? Let's translate it. From Latin, not Serbian. What? Why is oh, fucking duck duck go, dude? This is ghetto ass. Let's use Google Translate, which is probably less stupid. Unbelievable. Nullius. That means of no one. In verba. No one's words is what it translates to, or how it translates it. That doesn't sound right. Hmm. Anyway, maybe I can intuit it at some point. Anyway, uh, her renewed majesty has granted these grounds to the finest minds in Albion to work here. The purview is to invent, to hypothesize, to discover, and, most crucially, to watch the stars. Alright. An offer of work. We do like captains here at the Royal S. We need our space and, frankly, our comforts to think. But it is you, brave souls, who do the real leg work. Extremely educational. If not, our gardens are extremely fine, as is our conversation. And the port. Uh, the, uh, okay, so I could wander the gardens. Yikes. I could visit him. He intimated... Well, let's write a port report. Okay, and then he intimated that there might be work for industrious skyfarers. That sounds like me. Hello, Captain. Do come in. Come in. Now, are you here about work, or do you consider the term vulgar as well? Or do you consider the term vulgar as well? I send reports back to London periodically, but we can't be everywhere. So much to do, so little time. Um, okay. Deliver a port report from Palmyra and Plenty's Inconceivable Circus? Interesting. Okay, so you can get port reports from other places and deliver them here. I could go to the sun. Deliver a port report from the House of Rods and Chains. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Is that like, is that a kink thing? I think that's a kink thing. All right, here's, here's what's going on in the circus, dude. Nothing has changed, much as I expected. The astronomers tell me a very curious stone they have there. If one were to be fanciful, one might wonder if it is commemorative. Um, okay, got some money. I got some gratitude. Uh, that sounds the most useful right now. All right, see ya, dude. So, can I just do that ad infinitum? Oh, hold on. Circus, sun, and rods and chains. Okay, I'll remember that anytime I go there. Attend a port reception. Sure. Oh, do I have to? Yes, shit, fuck. I spend my Royal Society's gratitude to go to these things. All right, well, okay. That's all I can do right now. Uh, what else is here? The R Nell's Tower. The Royal Society's observatory is named for King Charles's canniest mistress. Nell's Tower is the jewel in the Society's crown. The sign on the door reads, Nell's Tower closed for the 13th annual Airy Dinner. Uh, I will attend. I see a tall man with a beard like a nest of vipers. The supercilious bursar introduces himself. I came to round up stragglers. But, as a captain, you are of rank sufficient to attend the dinner, if you wish to attend. Sure. The dinner is held in the mahogany and marble imperial dining room of Airy House. Every piece of the dinner service is mismatched, and both the furniture and the personages in the room are pleasantly rumpled. I like that. The supercilious bursar brings you to the high table, where the three senior astronomers of Nell's Tower are holding court. You are introduced to the senatorial professor, the chair for the effulgent sciences, and lecture for imperial affairs, as the first course is served. Um, oh, cool. Let's guzzle the port. <laughs> Good lord, it's smoked like fine cheese and fired from like a master potter's kiln. The color is pale ruby, like a star-kissed stone. Alright. Second course arrives. Buttered potatoes, blah, 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 blah. 
Let's uh, talk to the senatorial professor. Okay, we had a good time. Third course, or sherbets. Let's talk to the lecturer in Imperial Affairs. What have you got to say? In vino veritas, that means like, in wine, truth. Um, I know what the bursar's up to, distracting us from the fact that London's got us pointing the telescope at a dead corner of the sky. A matter of national security, they said. Got the wrong coordinates, if you ask me. Anyway, until they say we can move it, our studies are on hold. Interesting, interesting. Okay, the supercilious bursar leans in as the plates are cleared away. Before we adjourn, there's the question of patronage to consider. All eyes are on me. A hush falls over the table. The three faces of the astronomers are turned to you. The supercilious bursar continues as though nothing has changed. Our telescope is operated only by the will of the government. We are not allowed to move the tel telescope without permission. A bold skyfarer such as yourself might obtain such permission, or at least an official-looking document that could conceivably be construed as permission. Our astronomers would be very much interested in patronizing you. You bring them a permit, they can advance their researches. In exchange, they'll teach you what they know. Uh, I could choose the lecturer in Imperial Affairs, an iron-haired astronomer. I could choose the chair for the effulgent sciences, a wild-eyed astronomer, especially in the habits of the stars. Or the senatorial professor, the blindfolded cantankerous astronomer of old London. Let's do the chair for the effulgent sciences. I like wild-eyed. She lets out a high laugh. Wild as the shrieks of the bat-winged curators that ride the celestial winds. I'll show you such things, Captain. Come to the tower, do. And make sure you have a permit. So what kind of permit is this? Is it like a ministry permit? Because I've got a shit ton of those. All right, here astronomers turn the vast steel telescope to the heavens and report on the movement of the stars. London is keenly invested in their findings. Hmm. Okay, I could observe the clockwork sun. Seems like it's just going to raise my terror. It did! The state of the sun. You press your eyes to the telescope and... The sun, the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun! Great. Let's deliver the chair permission to move the telescope does use ministry stamped permits. Cool. Good to know. All right. The ascent to the telescope is arduous and up an improbable number of winding stone stairs. All right. So, all right. What'd you learn out? What are your latest reports? A small measure of progress was achieved. Oh, I see. I fixed the telescope firmly on the horizon, as I had indicated previous, like the Abbot horizon. Much must be left to speculate, but I believe there are commonalities with my observances at Port Avon. A different intent, for sure, but one must wonder. For how long have our microscopic activities been under the lens of minds immeasurably superior to our own? Okay, and I get stuff out of it. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, so I can, like, come back here periodically and do that? Okay. All right, where else can we go here? The Rochester Club. A cozy country house bolted onto the side of the society's glass houses and overgrown lawns. This is the meeting face of the infamous Rochester Racing Club. Um, okay. Inquire into joining the Rochester Club. You are, after all, a captain of the skies. I have to prove myself. They laugh. Oh, you were serious? Well, should you really wish to join our merry company, you'll have to prove yourself a proper racer. Okay. Compete in a Rochester race. Uh, I'm not going to click this yet because I'm on like half crew complement. Less than half. So I, oh, that wouldn't work. Well, I guess I could click it. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, you know what? I might actually be able to do this. The rules are simple. Get to the destination port and back here in 15 days. Uh, the reason I said I think I can make it is because it's at the floating parliament, which is fairly close. Still, though, dude, I don't know. <laughs> I really want to go back to London and recruit some more dudes. All right, it's the 5th of October. And then, all right, Portsmouth House. The workshops under the area are known collectively as Portsmouth House. The glass and brick factories are staffed by harassed inventors and engineers, working constantly to pr produce the next advancement in adventuring equipment. 
Portsmouth Arsenal. Sounds cool. Uh, smoke and soot, glass and steel, the ring of hammers on metal, the swearing of engineers, the acrid scent of sweat. Here, in the bowels of Portsmouth House, the scientists of the Royal Society work to produce experimental designs for daring captains. A team of engineers led by the energetic mechanic are excited to get to work on whatever you'll pay them for. Here you can convert goods to experimental modifications, which can be exchanged for unique equipment. Uh, that's I got some experimental modifications as a gift for upgrading uh, Titania. Cool, dude. An ambition. Inquire after the plucky Baroness's commission. Huh. Yeah, let's do that. Hmm, this is a singularly challenging commission. I suppose some of this stuff might come in useful, but the conditions the device is supposed to endure are extreme, and whoever's going to be inside it doesn't want us to get this wrong. They scratch their heads. They scratch their... Oh, it's a singular person. Okay. The sigils on the diving suit shiver. Any further assistance you can provide would be greatly appreciated. So what is this equipment? Okay. Ah, oh, man. So... I could do this right away, but I would give up almost all of my experimental modifications. Well, okay, it's not a big deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can use all kinds of stuff for these. Okay. Oh. Barrels of unseasoned hours. Alright, then I will do this. So collect the Baroness's mysterious equipment. Let's do it. It looks like a bathysphere, a large globe of iron and bronze wood, just big enough to hold two people who are prepared to be extremely candid with one another. <laughs> it has countless layers of plating and reinforcement, and its surface is engraved with luminous sigils. There's an attached crane and a cable. The sigils were my own addition, the mechanic confides. They roughly translate as an inexorable return to the point at which one began. Whatever you're going into, they should increase the odds of getting out again. Okay. So I go to the plucky Baroness, who I believe is in New Winchester. Um, and then what else you got here, dude? Peruse your designs. Pieces as much abandoned as finished are stored in this long gallery. Equipment gleams behind glass cases, like exhibits in a technical-minded museum. Take your time. Just let me know if I can be any assistant, of any assistance. All right, acquire the Mechanical Turk. This mechanical chess player, chess player is, in fact, a hoax. It contains a hidden space for a skilled player to sit comfortably within and operate it from within. That might have its own uses, though. Aha, so it occupies my auxiliary slot, requires my veils, blah, 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 increases hold by one and hidden compartments by one. That's okay. Hold by one? No, it's not okay. That actually sucks. Um, okay. Acquire the Montresor Chamber. Occupies your bridge slot. Requires you have at least 45 veils. And increases hold by four and quarters by four. That's not bad. Hold by four and quarters by four. I'm going to write some of this stuff down. So bridge slot is this one. Right now it's increasing quarters and that's it. That's pretty good, because, like, I don't, I've got plenty of guys, 18 slots, like, 18 crew members at any one time is more than I need, so, that sounds good, I'm gonna get that, I think. Okay, and then... Let's see here. So I'm going to have to... Well, okay. No, I didn't have enough for it, did I? So I'll need to donate some stuff here. Uh, what do I have the most of? I don't have a lot of uncanny specimens. I do have a lot of visions of the heavens. So I'll donate a bunch of those. I'll pause this while I'm doing that. All right, now let's keep a look in here. So I want to... Well, I think I want to get these, but I mean... Because the... Okay, Oh, wait, no, where am I looking? This. Okay, so that's good. Acquire the Rossetti Cabins. Uh, occupy your plating slot. Require your hearts. Blah, blah, blah. That's good. Increases armor by eight and quarters by two. 
No, armor is just health, and I've got plenty of health on my ship. Acquire the Mighty Pen Defensive Library System. <laughs> As in, like, the pen is mightier than the sword type of thing. A pneumatic library staffed by its own rat librarians. That occupies your auxiliary slot, which is... I think that's this? These here? Yeah. Uh, requires your hearts, blah, blah. Increases armor by five and hold by four. Uh, no. No thanks. Mechanical Turk, we've looked at already. The Prosperina Superior Mining Array. Mining Array require increases hold by four. That's okay. That's like this pressure canning system, but... Um... Mining instead. So, yeah, kind of equivalent. Acquire Carmilla, a forward mounted cannery that affords the bridge crew an excellent view as your prey is filleted. <laughs> Carmilla's in a cannery that is unusually mounted in the bridge slot. It requires an increased armor by five. See, that's nice because it goes in a different slot than the canneries usually do, so that would allow me to get like a cannery and an essaying thing and a mining array, but my bridge is currently giving me more quarters, which I kind of like. I don't know. Or amniotic crew containment. Occupies your plating slot, requires your veils is at least 65, and increases armor by 13 and quarters by 5. That's quite good. So if I could get my veils up that high, that's quite good. Okay, so then if I were going to do that... Where does that go? It goes in, a, in one of these plating... Okay, also, I decided that I'm not going to just permanently have these concealed cavities, because the only thing they give you is um, hidden compartments. So if you're not actively smuggling stuff, then it's not worth it. So... Um, let's see. What did I say I definitely wanted? This... and four hold is nice yep and then I could put something in that goes in my plating slot which would be like the Rosetti cabins probably so I would need eight experimental modifications yeah that's fine uh, let's give up a few more of these to get to that and then should I just buy the that other one even though I can't use it yet. There's a case to be made for that. The, uh, what's it called? Press. No, the carm. No, the press. Where is it? <laughs> uh, amniotic crew containment. Fails is 65. I'm not going to be there for a while, though. That's fine. I can always come back if I want it. Okay. Um, is there anything else I can do here? I can bring tea. In. I can bring a lot of stuff. Okay. Or I can go to the workshops. What's going on here? The Society constructs specialist equipment to further the Society's explorations, London's armaments, and the occasional Sky Captain's adventures. Hey, engineers. What's going on? The senior engineer marches across the smoggy workshop floor to meet you. Well, she barks. Sorry, I mean, hello? <laughs> We're frightfully busy. We're examining the effects of vitrefaction on Murgatroyd's tea. We've just had a breakthrough. There's a gentle explosion behind her, followed by the tinkle of shattering glass. <laughs> Uh, sorry, mustache. Do visit the arsenal if you're looking for something special. At the Portsmouth Arsenal, you can trade in cargo items for unique equipment. Is that where it just was? I think so. Hello, Tinkerer. The inscribed Tinkerer likes her work workbench tidy and her tea as strong as the devil's opinions. She believes in iteration, of technology, of society, of people, and her inventions are intend in to get intended to mitigate specific dangers and obstacles of the high wilderness. Her tea-stained notebook bulges with blueprints, and her skin is covered in inky treatments of the correspondence. She raises an eyebrow as you enter her office. So correspondence is like star talk, right? Um, she can provide truly exceptional equipment from her shop, if she likes you. Uh, 
Sure, if it's work you're after, Captain, I can be of assistance in that department. All right. She produces a slim notebook. The correspondence, Captain, the incandescent language, the Pentecostal tongues of the stars. I've heard of a unique sigil I've not come across before. It's been cited by students in Trader's Wood, by an old friend in the mausoleum, and by my least favorite person in Pan. As a captain, you could get to those places and confirm the sighting. I give you access to a few, a few of my unique designs, should you wish to help. Uh, do I need to go to all three? It says or, but I don't always trust that. All right, well, probably what I'm going to do. Uh, is, uh, what am I gonna do? Go back to London to get some more, uh, dudes. Not that way. Ow. <laughs> We're gonna go back to London to get some more people. And then try to make it to the floating parliament to win that race, I guess? Or do we just give up the race as lost? Or do we just do it now? Do we just... Oh, we're just going to do it now. We're going to try to get there. This will be the last thing. Oh, here. oh, I found the Royal Society. Hopefully we can get out this way. If not, we definitely ain't making it, dog. I really don't like running around with this little crew. So I need to get there before the... No, I need to get there and back. <sighs> Do we just say fuck that? I don't know if that's happening. If I had a full crew complement, it could be easy. But without... Oh, that, nope, that guy's bad news. Fuck you. See ya, dude. Those guys are not worth fighting. They're way too strong. They're way too fast. And he's gonna chase me, isn't he? Go away now. All right, so yeah, we're going to head back to London. We're going to get some more crew. I guess we'll visit the mausoleum to see what that dude is after. Or that girl. See if we can find those sigils she's looking for. But yeah, that'll be next time.